Okay, you guys, if Sage hadn't come out, Scholar would probably be my main job. You definitely need to play it, and I'm gonna show you how. It's one of two barrier healers, and do you know who else is a barrier healer? Zook Lionheart. Thank you so much, my friend, for supporting on Patreon as you're really protecting me and casting that ad low from the YouTube algorithm. So thank you very much. Without further ado, let's talk about some Scholar healing. Now, like all my other practical healing guides, I'm going to give you a 1 through 90, explain every single ability, and give you some dungeon pools. Now, the tips are the same as all the other healers. Always be casting. You never want to be standing around. Make sure you're gearing, as with the downscaling, you're probably going to be healing a little bit more, so make sure that gear is up to date. And those two are practically it. We're just going to get right into the 1 to 29. Scholar is a little bit different at this point from other healers since you have a fairy who will be taking care of the majority of the healing for these levels. When you summon your fairy, as your fairy should always be summoned, it is pretty much just a small region over time that you have no control over. It will just heal whoever is needed in your party. You also have your main GCD spell rune and your dot or damage over time bio. These are going to be pretty much the same all the way up to level 90 with just upgrades along the way. Your single target heal is Physic, which is just pretty much your Cure 1 or Benefic 1 or Diagnosis if you're playing other healers. Once you unlock the Fairy at level 4, keep this summoned. Sometimes it will despawn, very rarely though if something happens, but just make sure that it's always present. We move on to our first actual helpful ability, which is Whispering Dawn. This is our party-wide region that will use constantly on cooldown. This is basically your just go-to ability for healing your entire party as, again, your fairy is going to be doing most of the healing at this point. Because you have Whispering Dawn and you have your fairy healing, you really need to get used to DPSing here. There is no reason for you not to be dotting every single enemy with bio and spamming your ruin or single target GCD. So just start doing that now so then you can get used to weaving later on. At level 30, we get Adloquium, which is our first GCD spell. Now, don't get confused with the spell. Yes, we are a healer and technically we're shield players, but we want to focus more on barrier mitigation later down the road than actual hard casting shield abilities. If you also notice, we didn't really get many abilities 1 through 30. That's because you're an Arcanist. And once you hit level 30 is when you get your Scholar job stone. Now that we're here, let's work on our first dungeon pool. The tank will pull the first mob, add low if necessary, dot each enemy as you're running, and spam rune. You can cast an add low here, which is the adloquium, just short in name. It probably is not necessary though, as your fairy healing and your whispering dawn partywide regen is usually more than enough to keep players alive. So all scholars really shouldn't struggle at this point. Now let's chat about fairy positioning. This is something to understand as a scholar. You can go two ways here. You can start perfectly positioning your fairy or you don't really have to worry about it and just make sure you're standing in the middle of the arena this is because the fairy has a range in which it can cast its healing and when you use the fairy abilities they also have a range so you want to make sure your fairy is properly positioned whether that's by you or just placing it with the place ability now you don't have to worry your fairy is an npc so it will not take any damage so just put it right there in the middle of the arena and let it take all the aoe's Another reason why you want to place the fairy is if you're moving around and cast a fairy ability, there can be a stutter or delay in the fairy casting that ability because it is moving. So learning how to place it now properly is probably better off. Even with all that, you might still be a little off and miss that out there bard or black mage, but don't worry too much about it. Place it and leave it. Moving on to 31 to 49 content. At level 35, we get Sucker, which is our party-wide GCD shield and heal. I'm going to be super honest with you guys, I rarely use this. It can be good as a boss pool just to get a free shield up on everybody. Most bosses have a room-wide AoE damage ability about 20 seconds into a pool, so it's good habit to do only if you have time before the boss. I wouldn't really waste time doing it during battle though, as your Fairy and Whispering Dawn is more than enough. Rune 2, now this is not an upgrade to Rune 1. It can be a little bit deceiving. This is a different GCD ability than Rune. This is an instant cast. And at some point leveling up, it will be more beneficial to instant cast this than hard casting your Rune 1 spell. But it quickly gets outpaced by the Rune 1 upgrade. So you really want to just focus on using Rune 1. Where Rune 2 comes in is because it's an instant cast, you are able to move around while you're casting it. So instead of just running around and not damaging the enemy, now you can be instant casting this and damaging the enemy until you can get stationary and start casting rune 1 again. Moving on to Fey Illumination. This is increasing healing magic potency of everyone it hits, which effectively just means 
the amount of healing done by healing spells yours specifically. This also decreases magic damage, which most attacks are magic damage in the game, so it can be pretty useful. Now, be wary that I said spells, which means this ability does not stack with your later abilities. This only affects your GCD spells, which are Physic, Adlo, and Sucker. So if you have to start using GCD abilities to heal your tank, then definitely pop this before. Another thing we have to talk about is we have two fairy abilities now and you have to be thoughtful of casting them together as it creates a bit of a stutter with the fairy as it has a cooldown in between each ability. So if you try to cast Whispering Dawn and then immediately hit Fey Illumination, there's going to be a couple of seconds before it can cast the other ability. So just be mindful of that. After this, we finally get our job abilities, Ether Flow. This is the same as Arcanist in the sense of it's a 60 second cooldown and you get three Ether Stacks. And it also gives you back 20% of your MP. So this is the way that we keep Scholar's MP up. That means you want to keep this ability on cooldown and spend these stacks so then you never lose any stacks. We get two abilities with this Ether Flow ability, and that's Lustrate and Energy Drain. Lustrate now is your main way to be healing your tank, as it's just a free OGCD heal. Energy Drain is used for when you're going to get more stacks, but you don't want to waste the one or two you already have. You can just quickly pop Energy Drain if you don't need to heal anybody at that current moment, and you'll also get more MP back from that as well. This also damages the enemy. So the goal is to always keep that 60 second ether flow timer going and never let it just sitting there as you can be increasing your damage or healing for free. Now, when I say that, I wouldn't dump these too early. You wanna wait until that 60 second cooldown is just about to finish because you never know what kind of sticky situations that might come up in just a few seconds. Yay, Art of War, you can finally do some AOE damage. Even better, an instant cast, so you can run and cast this at the same time. After the tank pulls and you dot your enemies, make sure you're slapping that ground. This is a melee range, so you need to be close to your enemies. Let's go over a new tank pull with all of our abilities. Tank pulls mob. You'll dot your first enemy and then hit ether flow. You can't activate ether flow without being in battle, so that's why we have to dot an enemy first. Dot rest of enemies as you're running. Use lustrate as needed, art of war until the tank stops running, whispering dawn to make sure the tank doesn't run out of whispering dawn range, and art of war in heal as needed. You may want to throw an ad low if you feel you need a little bit more slack or maybe you have a tank that is a little newer and not rotating through their damage mitigation. So just case by case basis. Now 50 plus content will change our tank rotation as we get a lot of great abilities later on to make healing tanks a lot easier. Level 50, Sacred Soil. This is my go-to ether flow ability and one you should prioritize all the time if you're not in savage content. This is basically a 10% damage mitigation buff that we want on the tank at all times. It's your bubble ability and later on gets better when a regen gets attached around level 70-ish. When your tank pulls the enemy, you can simply place this down where the tank is at for some good old damage mitigation. Level 52, Indomitability. This is an ether flow ability as well and is a party-wide heal. This is great for healing all party members if taking damage. Used more for boss battles in my opinion as it's an OGCD so you can weave it in between damaging your enemies. Deployment Tactics. Now I personally love this ability a lot. Like I use it for almost every tank pool. What you can do is cast an ad low on yourself between tank pools. Sometimes it's easier to just do it on yourself than on the actual tank. And then cast deployment tactics to spread that shield to everyone else. Now you might say, well, why not just use sucker? And I'll tell you the reason why. Because ad low is 180% heal and shield. Sucker is 160%. I just really personally enjoy getting that extra 20% pretty easily, so it makes a difference in my opinion. Okay, so I banned this next ability, Emergency Tactics. I never use this ever, only in emergencies, hence the name. Your Ether Flow abilities are just so good and the regen from Whispering Dawn and Damage Mitigation, it's just not something I prioritize, but it is there if you need it. It essentially just takes away the shield of Adlo and Sucker and turns it into more healing, so for when things are getting really bad. This makes your fairy go away for a short time, but grants you three ether flow stacks and a 20% buff to your healing. I only use this ability for the stacks of ether flow. If I'm between stacks or something happens and I need another three stacks to heal the party, I will pop dissipation. You can even plan this pretty nicely at the end of a big trash pull to have stacks ready for the next trash pull if your ether flow is not gonna be on cooldown 
or to kind of revive from a sticky situation if all the party members just start running into walls. The last great way to use this is if you just want to increase your DPS, just pump those stacks into energy drain and put out more damage. The most loved and used ability in the Scholar Toolkit, Excogitation. I, Excogitate. I can't say it. It's just a delayed healing potency of 800, which is gigantic, and it's a free ability with ether flow. The great thing about this ability is you can set it and forget it. It will automatically trigger if the tank's health gets below 50% or it will go off in its own after 45 seconds. So make sure to prioritize this pretty often in pools. We're going to have another ability to pair this with later that even makes it more effective. Chain Stratagem increases critical hits the target takes by 10%. Just keep this on cooldown. It allows your party members to do more damage, and we love that. Last and not least, for our 70 toolkit, Ether Pact. This is a new gauge, the fairy gauge. Congrats, you have one ability to use this on. And that is Ether Pact. Basically, regens a targeted party member until you run out of fairy gauge or you stop the action. You get fairy gauge by using your ether flow stack. Be aware though, when your fairy is using the ether pact ability and you use whispering dawn, it will stop ether pact to execute that ability and then just go back to regular healing. You'll have to reactivate ether pact. So it can get a little weird when you are trying to use other ability first for the fairy. I mostly use this for trash pulls after I had casted whispering dawn. So then that means I don't really have to worry about the fairy not being able to do the other abilities I need it to do. This paired with Whispering Dawn, Sacred Soil, and an Eggs Cog, you're gonna be totally fine in almost every single trash pool. And if I'm being quite honest, and if all the other people who Scholar Main are being quite honest, we forget about this ability all the time because you only have one thing to use your Fairy Gauge on. So just make sure you put it somewhere where you can see it and weave it into your regular toolkit. Now we're gonna talk about our next dungeon pool, but before that, why not hit that subscribe button and smash that like button if you're getting any value out of this video. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm to put this off to more people as it can be kind of a jerk sometimes. Let's get a rough idea of what a dungeon pool can look like at this point with all your shiny new abilities. Tank pulls enemy. You can hit them with an add low right before they're out of range and then dot one enemy, ether flow stack, dot another enemy, put an eggs cog on the tank as you're running. Just keep dotting until the tank stops and throw down a sacred soil. From here, you're just using Art of War while using Whispering Dawn and or Ether Pack, just depending on what abilities are available. There's just so many ways that you can go about this, so you just kind of have to figure out what works for you. I would say a Sacred Soil is a must no matter what, as well as just mixing through between Whispering Dawn, Ether Pack, and Eggs Cog, so then they each get off cooldown at separate times for the next pools. If you absolutely had to, then you can cast another ad low, but hopefully your DPS are killing the enemies by the time that happens. Now after this and up to 90, we're getting some really high level abilities that at level 90 make Scholar like almost the best class to play because it makes it so incredibly easy to heal. And that starts us off with one of the arguably best ability Scholar has, Resuscitation. This allows the execution of Adlo, Sucker, Indom, and Excog to be free as well as critical. Most players pair this with an eggs cog on big pools and just for go healing for a little bit. I like it after a Whispering Dawn and Sacred Soil to help with mitigation and help it go just a little further. Another secret way I like to use this, which I know a lot of people are like, blah, don't do that, is pairing this with an add low and deployment tactics right before a boss pull for a gigantic shield on the tank and regular shields on the team members pre-boss pull. Now, before you ask, because I know you're going to, no, deployment tactics does not also give critical shields to everyone, but your tank is going to need a critical shield probably, so you might as well give it to him. Everyone else will just get regular shields. Fey Blessing. Just a free fairy healing ability for the group. Prioritize this above any GCD since it's just your fairy sprinkling some healing magic on everybody. Summon Seraph. Now I feel like I don't see this ability being used as often as it should, but it literally is just one of my favorite abilities in the Scholar Toolkit, and I keep this on cooldown in trash mobs all the time. You replace your fairy with a stronger version called Seraph. They do all the same things a fairy does, but just a little better in some areas. Her regular regen healing is now not only a heal, but also a tiny shield, like free mini adlos to whoever she heals, which is pretty cool. Not only that, you also get another ability opened up, Constellation, which is a free group AoE heal and shield. 
it just makes pooling and trash pulls way easier sometimes. Now let's go over our last two abilities and then go over a level 90 tank pool. We have Protraction, which is effectively your just tank buster mitigation, which increases max HP of a party member and restores the same amount of HP for 10 seconds. So it really adds to the tankiness. And our last ability that got probably the most hate I've ever seen in Final Fantasy XIV is Expedient, which most players thought was just going to be a movement buff and nothing else. But they added a 10% mitigation to this. And honestly, the movement buff comes in clutch sometimes when you're in a dungeon and you cast it and everybody can run out of the AoEs just in time. I also really like this to make dungeons go by faster, right? Maybe halfway to the end of a trash pool, I'll cast expedient so we kill everybody and then we can run to the next trash mob even quicker. Now, when I say healing is personal, I really mean that, but we're going to talk about some ways that your level 90 dungeon pools can go. I honestly don't believe there's a wrong way as healing is really about the knowledge of the fight, what you want to use and how reactive and proactive you can be. As long as you're keeping your GCD up damage up, I think you're totally fine with weaving in whatever you want, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Here is an example of a level 90 tank pool. Tank will pull first mob, you'll dodge your first enemy and hit that ether flow for stacks. I hit the tank with a resuscitation eggs cog while we're running and a sacred soil where they stop, all the while dotting the enemies on the way. Now then I either go into summon Seraph or Whispering Dawn, it's kind of up to you. I don't feel like you need both. I like to get Summon Seraph out of the way first and get it on cooldown so I don't forget to use it in the next trash pool. On the second mob pool, because you know that there's two mob pools before each boss, I'll hit them with another X cog if it's off cooldown or possibly an add low if I don't have an X cog. Sacred Soil should be on cooldown again as it's on a 30 second timer and then I'll use Protraction as that's a really great ability for large trash pools. And you can literally sprinkle in all your other global cooldowns, Fae Blessing, Expedient, probably Whispering Dawn again is if you use it right away. Honestly, it's just rotating back and forth between a few abilities for each big trash mob pool. I have the problem of actually utilizing all of my abilities as I feel the ones I use are on cooldown quick enough and it keeps the tank alive. I will say for the record that I rarely use Adlo or Sucker for GCD Hills as we just have so many abilities at this point, there's really no need for them in case things get real sticky or you burn through way too many healing OGCDs. Usually two to three at all times is gonna keep the tank well above the danger zone. I feel like the biggest problem with Scholar is that most people kind of get flustered or something happens in the dungeon and they just default to spamming Adlo instead of using their abilities. So just put your abilities on a hotbar where you know you're gonna be able to rotate them quickly and easily. I hope that this video has helped even a little bit get a basic understanding of Scholar as it's really in such a great fun place to play right now. You can find all my social media links down below for Discord, Patreon, and my second YouTube channel where I post all sorts of fun clips and reactions from my live streams. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.